It's now time for our weekly political segment, Texas Face Off. Joining me this morning is Tara Polmeyer, Communications Manager for Progress Texas, and Matt Makoviak, Chairman of the Travis County Republican Party. We thank you both for being with us this morning. Thank you. Sure. So, you know, it seems like, I, I was just saying this, that traditionally elections and campaigning didn't start until after Labor Day, but we are <laughs> starting earlier and earlier, including some big announcements made yesterday. Wendy Davis, former Texas Senator, announced that she is going to challenge Chip Roy mm -hmm. in the upcoming election. He was just uh, elected to Congress uh, this past this past election. And so, you know, Matt, we'll start with you on your thoughts about a challenger to Chip Roy. Do you think Wendy Davis has what it takes to, to unseat him? No, I think the district's a bad fit for her. I'm not really sure why she threw a dart at a map and decided to, to, to run that district. You remember, she's a Fort Worth, she at least was a Fort Worth resident when she served in the state Senate. So that's four hours from where this district is. This is a uh, district that takes in part of South and Southwest Austin, uh, and then goes down and takes in Hayes County to the Hill Country. It takes in part of Bear County and San Antonio. Look, it's a pretty conservative district. When Lamar Smith was there, he would get 58, 60, 62 percent of the vote. Mm -hmm. Chip Roy was a new member of Congress, uh, new, running for Congress for the first time in November of last year, uh, and he was outraised by a Democratic challenger. In a, in a 2018 political environment where the Democrats had the wind at their back. Um, I, I don't think Wendy Davis can win. I think she's extreme. She's too liberal for that district. Uh, it's, not, it's not a Democratic district. It's at best a swing district, and really it's a, it's a Republican district. Uh, but we'll see. She's going to raise a lot of money. She's getting a lot of attention. Um, I, I'm generally in favor of Democrats raising a lot of money for races I don't think they can win because that wastes their resources. Uh, but we'll see. It's going to be an active campaign. It's going to get a lot of attention. Yeah, Tara, definitely going to get a lot of attention. Well, he mm -hmm. pointed out uh, that Davis used to be in Fort Worth. She's been living yeah. in the Austin area yeah. uh, as of late. This is her spot, you know, and I think when it comes down to people viewing Chip Roy, I do think that he is more in line with the likes of the very unlikable Ted Cruz and our indicted Attorney General Ken Paxton. And so I think that Wendy sees an opportunity here to truly represent the people of this district, to truly make sure that we have a future for our children and our grandchildren and make sure that we support policies like relief aid, like health care for all and all sorts of other things like that. Now, I think what's interesting is Wendy Davis had a lot of momentum coming out of the 2015 legislative session mm -hmm. that then launched her running for governor, uh, a failed run for governor. Do you feel like she waited too long, though, before announcing her next move? Has it been too much time? No, I don't think so. I think Wendy's been very busy with her nonprofit Deeds Not Words and she's been really bolstering and talking to the youth of Texas and making sure that we have a future generation of change makers that are able to carry Texas forward into 2020 and beyond. And so when we look at the electorate of Texas and the way that Texas is moving, Texas is turning blue in 2020 and we're excited to have Wendy along for the fight. Texas turning blue in 2020. You know I couldn't let that statement oh, yeah. uh, go past. <laughs> what are your thoughts there, Matt? No, I mean, that's not going to happen in a presidential election cycle. I mean, Trump won Texas by eight and a half percent. That was historically closer than it's been. Um, you know, Beto had $80 million uh, last time, which was a record amount of money for any Senate candidate in the history of the country. Uh, and he benefited with straight ticket voting. And he brought some new voters out, certainly in the midterm election. Republicans are going to be fired up. There's a lot at stake in this election. I do think there will be eight uh, very competitive congressional races. This will be one of those eight. Uh, there will be one very competitive state Senate race, and then there will be 20 or 25, maybe 30 state House races that are going to be competitive. But on the statewide level, no, Texas is not competitive. That's why uh, you're seeing a bunch of sort of second level and third level Democratic candidates run for Senate. Uh, you don't see, you know, potentially first tier candidates running for United States Senate. So, uh, look, I don't know what you mean by Wendy Davis representing the district. Uh, an extreme position on abortion won't represent this district supporting late term abortion. You know, her opposition to the Second Amendment is not going to work in rural Texas. Uh, so she's going to have to answer for those positions. It'll be interesting to see whether she tries to pretend she's a moderate. You know, you mentioned uh, something. You mentioned that Senate race. And so that's another thing we want to talk about because uh, <clears throat> Texas Senator Royce West from Dallas announced yesterday that he intends to challenge John Cornyn. This is added to a long list now of Democrats. We are we also have MJ Hagar. We have a couple of a former and a current Houston City Council member and now the senator from Dallas. Your thoughts on challenging Cornyn? Yeah, it's a big field and the beneficiary of that is John Cornyn because the, the likely scenario here is that the Democrats are not only going to have a primary that's going to be four or five ways, but they're going to have a primary runoff, which 
which will take them uh, two months beyond the March uh, election into May. So it's going to be June 1st before they have a nominee who can raise money. At that point, John Cornyn may have 15 or 20 million dollars in the bank. He's got, I think, seven or eight or even nine million now. Um, Cornyn, there's a Dallas Morning News story just a couple days ago about how, how Cornyn's building an incredible statewide organization at this point. So we'll see. I, I think these are second and third tier candidates. These are not pretty people who have an ability to build a statewide organization and raise the resources necessary. Uh, and they're going to be pretty fractured throughout the primary. What are your thoughts there? Because it seems like Royce West is a pretty solid candidate, especially when we look at the support that he has in Dallas. Absolutely. And I think Democrats across the spectrum have a wealth of candidates to choose from when it comes to the primary. I think when it comes to a race that is so important like this one, really, we need all hands on deck. And so I am excited to see so many candidates enter the field. When we think of John Cornyn, you know, not many people know what he's been working on lately. And he's been in office for so many years. And so for a Democratic candidate to come in and have some name recognition, that is really going to push them forward above Cornyn, I would say, especially when he's a candidate that has consistently worked to repeal the Affordable Care Act, which provides insurance for so many of our Texans. Um, he has consistently sided with the NRA, consistently tried to side with Trump the entire time. And so we are excited, excited to see all of these Democrats on the field. All right, should definitely be interesting and lead to a very interesting primary. Well, we thank you both for being here with us today. If you guys missed any of this, you can head on over to kview.com right after the newscast to catch this segment. We'll be right back.